here's something really promising. A pocket-sized camera gimbal with detachable head and giving you a huge amount of cool filming options, at least at first sight. But is it really that good? Let's inspect! Hey, welcome back to the channel! My name is Michael and nice to meet you if we see each other for the first time. And uh, if, if that's the case, maybe you can consider subscribing, especially after you watch this video to the end. And if you like it, that would be even better. So, now, I'm really happy that we're together in order to thoroughly test this. You know, it's, it's the latest coming from the company Feiyutech and represents a camera. It's actually an action camera grade optics and performance combined with three axis mechanical gimbal stabilizer. And um, that's called the Feiyu Pocket 2S, and that's the obvious attempt of the company Feiyu Tech to compete with the market leader, DJI and their Pocket 2 series. And they try to be extra innovative and creative by designing this to be with a detachable head. On theory, it opens a whole lot of options to film from different angles and gives you the freedom to not be limited to the body only. If you wonder where the heck this device comes from, well, Feiyutech are best known for their awesome gimbals and I've tested a bunch of them on the channel already, so you can check these older videos which are linked in the description below this one. Also, a video for one of their most popular devices, the Feiyu Pocket 1, is also here in case you need to get up to speed with the type of tech that we are talking about. My biggest concern at this point is the price. $329. Sounds like Feiyu are going premium and believe a lot in the qualities of their newly designed Pocket 2S. This is only $30 less than the DJI Pocket 2 and a lot more than the first generation at the moment. And of course, much more expensive than the likes of Fimi Palm 2 and similar. So let's keep on doing what we do best here and explore all the details. Unpacking a slim box. I think the presentation is okay-ish, nothing really too great, but so was the DJI Pocket 2 experience. Although here I'm not getting the same feeling of nice material as I was getting at this stage with most of the competitive devices. Of course, it's much more important how the device actually performs than the way it's packed and it appears. Size-wise, it looks rather big. Nice idea about the detachable head, but given the fact it's advertised as pocket size, you must have really big pockets in order to have it inside. And, well, you may feel uncomfortable knowing that part of it can detach and there are some wires involved. But let's say that the size is tolerable and we can agree that it's rather compact. Some accessories are present too, as well as velcros to easy attach to backpacks and similar. We can see the placement of the different IOs, there's a slot for microSD, the control buttons which include a convenient joystick, not to miss the power button on the side, which is an idea borrowed by you know who, and the small display. But there's something missing. There is no integrated quarter inch mount, so that's a little disappointing. There is such one for the detachable part though. Whether this has impact on the shooting process, I will of course show you a lot more samples filmed in different conditions so that you can decide for yourself. First, important to discuss the technical specs. Image sensor, that's the 8.5 megapixel Sony IMX317. There's 130 degree field of view optics with aperture f by 2.0, a dual core eye catch chipset, 5 way joystick, Wi Fi inbuilt, Type C port, and micro HDMI out. And there's a big enough battery to let you record for more than 3 hours. The weight of the device is 180 grams, weighs almost as much as a modern smartphone, so I would say it's rather heavy. Now, if specs are not your thing, I'm not convinced so far. The image sensor is something that we've seen with some action cameras in 2017, and this motor has always been neglected by major smartphone makers, so you may find it with only a few devices, mostly not popular brands like Umidigi. The Cortex-A7 technology by the chipset, well, not really the latest and greatest, but if it works fine and it doesn't overheat, we wouldn't really care. Battery life must be impressive though. So, let us do some real-life testing and we're gonna start with the controls because I believe that they are very easy to use and very innovative and I'll, I'll take here the ball head and uh, over here we've got a joystick so you can you can look in, into this piece and just throughout it when I press the joystick in any of the directions I want to point the head to, it actually moves 
and at super convenience this joystick navigation was for the first time integrated in in such a device by the Fimi Palm uh, DJI's pocket series have always asked you to buy an extra accessory in order to have this the display is nice however not as bright as I wish it was for such a small size and such a high price Feutech should have included a brighter one because if you have some sunshine outdoors better don't count on it if the day is cloudy or dark then it's fine Navigation is super simple and swiping down shows the major menus. This is where you can adjust the settings and most of the config options. Swipe right to access the recordings and swipe left in order to choose the shooting mode. Photo, video, slow motion and so on. There are a bunch of them. I also really like the power button, which is right here, because it's not just the power button, it's also mode switch button. So when you press it shortly, you know, it switches between the different shooting modes. Uh, it can go between uh, photos, slow motion or, well, basically whatever you configure it to. It's very similar to the operation on the DJI Pocket Series, which has the power button on the same side. If you think it's a coincidence, well, might be. But that clearly, especially the quick navigation through the modes, that's a good catch. Another new feature makes its way through the software, the option to start a recording, then pause it and then resume it again without having to create a new file. Not sure if this is something that I personally am going to use a lot, but if you come from the standpoint of a person not keen on using video editing software, might be a bliss. Now, some more footage. The standard mode, 4K 24 frames per second, it looks nice. There are a lot of details and the footage seems to be with high bitrate. Feiyu advertise up to 120 megabits in 4K 60fps. That's really decent. Doesn't matter the scenery, I think the device gets some really good footage, mostly crisp and sharp. However, if you use the software zoom feature, things get really bad, so I wouldn't recommend it at all. I was rather happy with the low-light performance as well, clearly not up to par with DJI Pocket 2, which has a larger sensor and wider aperture, but kind of acceptable for such a small camera. The really big advantage of such camera gimbals over regular action cameras is indeed at night, because mechanical stabilization is a lot better than any software kind of stabilization due to the way it works. So if you wonder whether GoPro or such a pocket-sized camera gimbal is going to be competitive, to me, the answer is very simple. However, GoPros have their own strengths. Clearly, Feo have tried to bring the best out of the two worlds, but this wire between both feels awkward. I found myself being extra careful during transportation, and every time I needed to take out the camera unit quickly, it didn't really work so well. After both are apart, things are easier, but I still see no reason to use a wired kit over a function with wireless controller like a smartphone app connection. But I repeat that mine is just a point of view, so feel free to entirely disagree with me. It's all about finding the best device for your own case, and Feiyu Tech give you a lot of reasons to like the Pocket 2S. Very decent is also the Feio lock feature, part of the professional features, preserves highlights and black areas, so if you record in this mode and later on add some color grading and exposure adjustments, results could be fascinating. That's another well done feature. Ha! I think I made it work. So, audio test of the Feio Pocket 2S. Uh, and you can let me know what you think of the audio quality and the microphone quality of this device. I couldn't figure out a way to add an external microphone. Might be possible because it has a Type-C port. But I can tell you for sure that you can barely see on this display. I can even show you this, this wire is horrible. But uh, you, you, you can see that you can't see if there is direct sunlight on this display. And if those two units are apart, it's, it's rather inconvenient. Now, if we were using the GoPro Hero 9 right now, I'm pretty sure that there was about to be no sign from the wind. Not really sure if there is too much disturbance caused by it right now but you can let me know because we are here right next to the beach not too windy though so let me know how does the microphone of the Feu Pocket 2S feel comment below we haven't really covered the photos so here are some samples very impressive really great exposure and dynamic range for some of them and no distortions at all but they will become soft if you use the zoom option so at this point of time unless they fix it with a firmware update I've decided not to use any cropping 
side by side with DJI's latest, and here are the results. You can see the difference between the two implementations of color science. In fact, it's the moment where we're going to start talking about the drawbacks. Horizon issues. This is like the biggest nightmare for all the gimbal makers. They you have to work on a fix because it can ruin a lot of important shots. I'm pretty sure firmware updates can improve this behavior, although never really worked with firmware updates on another device, Snop V Mate, for instance. I'm gonna add to the list the lack of tripod mount on the body, the rather poor software zoom, and the not so great smartphone app, which these days, especially if you target Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram streamers, is very important. No waterproof rating as well, and these are the negatives I've discovered so far. Generally, the Feiyu Pocket 2 leaves me with mixed feelings. On one side, it's a really amazing and high-quality design with this innovative head-detaching opportunity. But on the other hand, all the drawbacks that we have mentioned, and it's uh, lacking the auto-focusing system, it's lacking this uh, possibility for uh, professional-grade shut account operation and all the nice features that you can get with the DJI Pocket 2 and also a lot of catching up to do with the smartphone application. So, if your social media experience is more important than anything, probably the competition could be a slightly better decision. But if you don't recognize any of the drawbacks that we have discovered as a severe threat, then yeah, that could totally be a great choice for filming videos on the go without too much of preparation. And if you find good ideas about how to use a detachable thing without <laughs> destroying the cable, that would be absolutely great. So it's really interesting to find out what you guys and girls think about the Feiyu Pocket 2. Comment below. Uh, would you go for it, especially knowing that its price is almost the same as the Feiyu Pocket 2? No, the DJI <laughs> Pocket 2. So anything that you want to share, comment below. As usual, links with uh, the modest discount I, I managed to find for you of all the products that appear throughout this episode is in the description below the video. Thanks so much for watching. Can't wait to see you in the next episode. I'm Michael. Wish you a great day. Bye.